To start our work with solving equations, we need what is called the addition property of equality. And it says that if A and B are equal, then A plus C and B plus C are also. Or, in other words, the equations A equal B and the equation A plus C equal B plus C have the same solution. So adding the same number to both sides of an equation will not change what's true about the equation, and that's the solution. The way that we would use this by solving the equation A plus 2 is equal to 6, we want to get x by itself on one side of the equation, so we're going to add the opposite of this number to both sides. So x plus 2 plus negative 2 is equal to 6 plus negative 2. So this line right here is simply this line with negative 2 added to both sides. Then you can see that 2 plus negative 2 is 0, and x plus 0 is x. So I've, I've isolated x on the left side of the equation. That means that 4, which is on the right side, must be the solution to this equation. Now, x equal 4 is a solution to this equation because it's the number that, when replaced for the variable x, turns this equation into a true statement. 4 plus 2 is 6, so I have 6 equal to 6, a true statement. Let's look at our first problem. Is x equal negative 2 a solution to this equation? Well, we can find out by substitution. So what, what I'll do is take x equal negative 2 and substitute it in for x into the equation. When I do that, I have 2 times negative 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 times negative 2 plus 3. And I'll put a little question mark over this to ask myself, are these two numbers here equal? If they are, then x equal negative 2 turns this equation into a true statement, meaning that it is a solution to this equation. Let's check and see. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 1. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus 3. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. So there, in fact, I have a true statement meaning that x equal negative 2 is a solution to the equation. So when we solve equations, we're looking for numbers to replace the variable with that turn the equation into a true statement. In this case, x equal negative 2 is the only solution to this equation. Any other number we replace x with will give us a false statement here when we simplify the resulting expression. Let's solve our first equation. x minus 5 is equal to negative 4. I want to solve this for x. So what I'm going to do is isolate x on one side of the equation. In order to do that, I need to get rid of the negative 5. I'll do that by adding the opposite of negative 5 to both sides. x minus 5 plus 5 is equal to negative 4 plus 5. So you can see what I've done is used that addition property of equality to add 5 to both sides of this equation. The result on the left side is x plus negative 5 plus 5, which is x plus 0. And on the right side, I just get 1. x plus 0 is x. So I have x equal 1, and that is the solution to my equation. Now, this equation, this one, this one, and this one are all equivalent. They all have the same solution. My last equation simply is the easiest one to read. It says x is equal to 1. So to keep the key to solving this equation, the addition property of equality. Here's our next example. a plus 1 third is equal to negative 2 thirds. Again, I'm going to isolate the variable a on the left side of the equation. That means I need to get rid of the 1 third. I'll do that by adding its opposite to both sides of the equation. The opposite of one-third is negative one-third. So again, you can see the only thing I've done is added the same number to both sides of the equation. The left side now is a plus zero, and the right side is negative two-thirds plus negative one-third, which is negative three-thirds. a plus zero is a, and negative 3 thirds is the same as negative 1. So this time my solution is a is equal to negative 1. It's the number I replace a with to make this a true statement. And isn't that correct? Negative 1 plus 1 third is negative 2 thirds. So you can see that it does work. Here's our next one. This time I need to simplify a little bit before I get started with my addition property. So I want to simplify each side of the equation as much as possible before I use that addition property. So here is x plus 4 subtract 7 is negative 3 and then 3 subtract 10 is negative 7. Now, I want to isolate x on the left side. I need to get rid of the negative 3. I'll do that by adding its opposite. x plus negative 3 plus 3 is equal to negative 7 plus 3. So there's the 3 that I added to both sides of the equation. x plus 0 is x. 
and negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. So I have a solution here, x equal negative 4, and the only difference between this equation and the ones I've solved before it is that I had to simplify each side of the equation first, and then I used my addition property. Let's go now and look at one last equation. 8 minus 5 is equal to 3x minus 2x plus 4. Again, I want to simplify each side as much as possible. I'll simplify this side down to 3. 3x subtract 2x, that's going to be 1x plus 4. This time my variable appears on the right side of the equation, and that's fine. I'll just leave it there. I want to isolate that x on this side of the equation, so I need to get rid of the 4. To do that, I'll add its opposite, negative 4. 3 plus negative 4 is equal to x plus 4 plus negative 4. Now, 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1. x plus 4 plus negative 4 is x plus 0, which is just x. So negative 1 is equal to x. That's the same thing as saying x is equal to negative 1. Now, before we leave this problem, let's go ahead and check this solution in the original equation. So I'm going to take x equal negative 1, put it back into the equation, and see what I get. 8 minus 5 is equal to 3 times negative 1 minus 2 times negative 1 plus 4. 8 minus 5 is 3. And let me put my little question mark here to see because I want to remember that I'm trying to see if this is a true statement or not. Minus 3, negative 2 times negative 1, positive 2, plus 4. 3 is equal to negative 3, plus 2 is negative 1, plus 4 is 3. So sure enough, I get a true statement. That means that my solution checks. Now, you want to check solutions when you're taking an exam or a quiz, something like that, when you want to be absolutely sure that the uh, answer that you get is the correct solution. So to do that, take your solution, substitute it back in for the variable in the original equation, simplify each side, and see if you get a true statement. True statement means that you do have the correct solution. False statement means you don't have the correct solution. You have to look for a mistake in your work.